Okay, in this video, I want to talk about GPS hardware. Now, this is the GPS module I've been using in a lot of my projects. It's made by Garmin, and it uses an external antenna. This is an antenna here, which plugs into the antenna connector over here. But I've mounted it on a Vero board, so I could get access to all the connections, and I could do some breadboarding and do some experimentation. But it's time to retire this board, and I like Garmin products, so I bought one of their newest... GPS is. It's a GPS 18X and this has the antenna built into the module itself. Okay, this is what the new Garmin GPS looks like. It looks kind of like a hockey puck. So it's all in one package. The antenna is inside the enclosure and it has a little mounting screw on the back and it has a watertight connector so you could use this outdoors. Now this connector here has the power. It runs on 5 volts and the RS-232 port. So all I need to do is cut off this connector and put on a DB9 connector so I could feed it into a, a terminal program like TerraTerm. So next, I'll, that's what I'll do. I'll actually cut this off and I'll interface this properly so we could actually get this up and running. Okay, I cut the original connector off the cable of the GPS and I added in a power cable. You can see my red and black wires here. That's my power cable. And on the other end, I've I got some banana plugs. So I can plug it right into my power supply. And the GPS runs on 5 volts. I've also connected up a DB9 connector to the RS-232 port. It's a female DB9 connector and it's configured as a DCE. And I got myself a serial to USB cable. And this is configured as a DTE and that just plugs into there. And then I plug the USB connector into my computer. And I could run a program like TerraTerm or PuTTY. And we could actually look at the NEMA strings that the G GPS is outputting. So we'll power it up and we'll hook it up to the computer and we'll see if there's any activity. Okay, I got my GPS up and running and I'm monitoring the serial port of the GPS. I'm using a serial terminal program called TerraTerm. Now you can see the NEMA strings being displayed on the screen and they're being updated every one second. So every, every line there is a NEMA string. Now the acronym NEMA, N-M-E-A, stands for National Marine Electronics Association. So this is the NEMA 0183 protocol. This is a standard GPS protocol. Now I just took the GPS out of the box, so I haven't exposed it to any satellites. So this is the data that's just inside the GPS. Now if we pause the screen, we can have a look at some of these, these strings. And you've noticed each uh, NEMA string starts with a dollar sign, and then there's some characters after the dollar sign, that's our GPS header. Now the first two characters we see here is GP. That stands for United States GPS System. Now, if those two letters were GL, that would be the Russian GPS system, which is GLONASS. Now, the next three characters, GGA, is the sentence description. Now, that describes what kind of data you're going to find in this string. So, if you look in the documentation, it'll tell you what kind of data you'll find in this string. And each data has a data field. Now, each data field is between commas. So, from here to here would be a data field in between the two commas. So if you want to pick out a certain part of data, you would count how many commas from, from, from the GPS header and then extract your data from comma to comma. So depending on the project, you have to decide what kind of data you want to extract from, from the data strings. So you could extract latitude, longitude. You could extract speed, how fast you're going. You can extract your bearing, how many degrees from north are you traveling, uh, the time, the date, uh, the number of satellites that your GPS sees. Are you in 2D mode or 3D mode? Now 2D mode gives you latitude and longitude and you need three satellites for that. And 3D mode gives you latitude, longitude and elevation and you need four satellites for that. So you have to decide what kind of data you need and it will tell you what sentence to pick. Like here's an RMC sentence, here's a GGA sentence, a GSA sentence. So you look up in the documentation Depending on the sentence, it'll tell you what kind of data is in that sentence, and it's up to you to pick out the data that you need for your project. Okay, here's a bit of code that I used to extract the latitude-longitude data from a NEMA sentence. Now, this code is written in fourth, and it will monitor the serial port of the GPS, which is sending out its NEMA strings at 4800 baud. Now, the latitude-longitude data is inside the sentence GGA. So we have to scan for the sentence GGA, and to do that, will scan for the for the header GPGGA. So my code, my fourth code is called get GPGGA. 
So the first thing it does, it goes into a begin until loop. And the first thing it's looking for is a dollar sign. And that's to detect the start character dollar sign, the beginning of the NEMA string. Now when it sees a dollar sign, it'll go into the word fill header. That'll put the next six characters into the string variable header. Now string variable header is compared to the text gpgga comma. And if there's a match, they'll come out of the loop and continue on. But if it's not a match, it'll go back up to the beginning. It'll wait for the dollar sign. Then it'll fill the header with the next six characters. Then it'll compare header to the text gpgga comma. Now when there's a match, then it will jump out of the loop and it'll jump out to the next word skip field. Now the latitude data is in field number two, so we have to skip over field number one, so we have to, we have to skip over one of the delimiter commas. So once we're in field number two, we can start looking for the latitude data. So we'll read in the data until we see the next comma. And we'll take the data and put it into the string variable latitude. Now we continue on doing this, the next field, for the latitude hemisphere, we'll read up to the next comma and put the, that data into the latitude hemisphere string variable. And we'll do that for the longitude. Same thing, we'll read up to the, to the comma. And we do that until we get all the data into all our variables. Now these variables will be updated every second. So if we need the data, we just have to read the variables. So that's how we can extract latitude and longitude data from a NEMA string. Okay, here's a little GPS project which I have built. Now this is mounted in my car and it's powered off the car battery. You can see the minus and plus 12 volt connector. Now inside this box is a GPS module and there's a cellular phone module and these are the antenna connectors which feed the hidden antennas on the vehicle. Now this is the anti-theft device so if I go to the mall or go watch a movie I could phone this box with my cell phone and I could arm it. Now once it's armed if somebody steals my car, the GPS will detect movement and actually call me on my cell phone and speak to me because it has a text-to-speech module. It'll tell me if the car is moving and how fast or if it's stationary. It'll give me the latitude and longitude uh, coordinates. It'll tell me which direction the car is going, like the bearing, and it'll tell me how many satellites it's receiving. Now if the thief goes into an underground parking and we lose the GPS signal, uh, the box will store the last position and keep transmitting the last position. Now also another thing I could do, I have two more pins on this uh, connector here. I, it's hooked up to my ignition and I could actually shut down my car remotely. I could kill the ignition on my car. So what I'll do, I'll install this back in my car and I'll drive around in a park somewhere. And I could demonstrate some of the talking messages that this thing will transmit. Alarm status is armed. Position of unit. Latitude. 49 degrees. 9.9234 minutes north. Longitude. 122 degrees. 38.3547 minutes west. Unit is stationary. Four satellites. Test unit. Out. Okay, that was a little example of what you could do with the GPS technology and this technology is available to everybody. So I hope this video gives you guys some ideas to build your own GPS projects.